Water is not infinite unless you're in a river or ocean biome. If you are in a river or ocean biome and leave the area, the source blocks may still be sucked up. So you need to move to water bores as soon as possible. Alien nests may contain several spawners. The bigger the nest, the more spawners they're likely to have. Alien bugs can destroy blocks and they can climb. Oil source blocks can be picked up by shift and mining in soft touch mode with the tech bins tray. This enables you to move your oil supply into your base because these source blocks are required by the structure. Natural gas source blocks can also be picked up and moved in the same way. Same with nitrogen and chlorine blocks, source blocks. When placing down machines from capsules, the left click rotates and the right click places. You can right click again to pick it back up if you're not happy with the placement left click again to rotate and right click again to put down. You can only pick the machine back up if you can see the binding box and that's usually the last machine that you put down of that type. On several machines like the hydro plant you can remove the fluid router and the fluid pipes leaving the valves and the machine structure will remain as a hydro plant. This allows you to pipe directly from the valves. When placing down okay horse when placing down large structures like the distillation tower you will get a wireframe instead of the blocks. This is for performance issues. So place down. If you're not happy with it, you can right click to pick it back up, rotate it and replace it again. On some of the structures, the valves will need to be rotated. You can rotate them using the crescent hammer. However, most of the valves will need to be broken and replaced for them to orient correctly. And don't forget to shift right click to open a valve. The IE pipes sometimes or nearly always will place down with the face open. You can simply right click with the IE hammer or do a block update to make sure they stay in the right, or right orientation. You can also disconnect these pipes at certain stages and then pipe directly from the actual pipe itself. You don't need to come out the fluid router at the bottom and you don't need to filter it. So you could just branch off from this. To reorientate the fluid valves correctly on a distillation tower, simply break them, place a block above place the valve back, then use a crescent hammer to rotate them around the correct way. Using the crescent hammer and the, um, en sorry, the en using the engineer's hammer you can disconnect the pipes all the way up on the distillation tower and hydro plants as we've already seen connect another fluid pipe and branch off that way if you so wish whilst maintaining the structure of the distillation tower. This allows you to manipulate and send fluids without actually having to use the filter at the bottom. 
top tip, don't forget to open your valves. Simply by right clicking. Arrow shows the, the way that the fluid flows. Read the quest text. More often than not, the information you're looking for is actually in the text. You'd be surprised how many people come into Discord and say, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I get steam out of the boilers? Well, it actually shows you a picture down here of steam coming out the top. Water goes in to the boiler valve, steam comes out the top and only the top of the boiler pump. To form any of the uh, magnetic craft structures, simply place down with the capsule, break the break me block, put in the relevant um, controller block and right click. So break the break me put in the controller block and that's the wrong one put in the controller block and right click break me controller block right click both the um, grinder the hydraulic press and the sieve automatically output from the back from the back from the three ports underneath. Input is either via the um, blue side with the X on or from the grinder you can input from the top. From the sieve you can hopper in into that gap there but the hydraulic press has only one input and that's with the uh, blue side. Power connections are these little stubs, so I'll need to power them from there. They can output onto belts by going directly out, and then from there you can move by going out sideways but putting a hopper on top, or in the case of the sieve, you can simply hopper in to each other. or by the sieve you can hop it directly onto belts. Let's talk about belts. To move items out of chests you have two choices. You can put a hopper belt underneath a chest and that will extract onto the belt. Or you can use inserters to pull out it's the wrong way around. And insert onto belts. If a belt has nowhere to go or doesn't terminate, the items will stay on the belts but will eventually stack up. So one little square could hold as much as a stack, single stack of items. If there is nothing at the end of a belt, the items will drop into the world. Inserting items using the hopper belt is by far quicker, as you can see, than using the single inserter and is much more server friendly than what the inserter is. To insert items into a container you not only need to put a chest or a container at the end but you need to take a dispenser and hit the belt with it. This will then turn it into an insert into the container. Thermal expansion portable tanks can be locked to a specific liquid. Simply place the tank down, place the liquid in and with an empty hand shift right click. To see that it's locked you will see the corners go red and when you pick the tank back up 
you'll see in your inventory it says the word locked. So again, place the tank down, place the liquid inside with an empty hand, shift and right click. This can be useful for filtering tanks. By placing a locked tank, so the pipe connects and then hitting the portable tank with a crescent hammer, as in right click, that allows the liquid to flow into the big tank below. This creates a foolproof system where only specific fluids can get into the large tanks. Much more foolproof filtering system.